country of the ancient world on the Mediterranean north of Palestine. The Phoenicians were great travelers. They colonized Cyprus, Rhodes, Cyprus, Rhodes. Crete! Cyprus, Rhodes, and Rhodes. Cyprus, Rhodes, Crete. <laughs> in one year. For gosh sakes, what for? I'm unmanageable. You're new here too, aren't you? Last month. You like it? They say it's the finest girls' school in the country. I don't either. Gum? Thanks. Mm. Mm. You uh, like Mr. Drago? I think he stinks. Do you? I hate him. So do I. What about Miss Cooney? You like her? Oh, I think she thinks worse than Mr. Draco. Me too. You, uh, know many other girls around here? Not many. Do you? Not many. Oh, darn! Do you have rubber bands? Yeah, listen. Haven't you? No, but I got railroad tracks. Golly, Moses. How long have you had yours? Nearly a year. How long have you had yours? Nearly two. When are you gonna go off? Dooney says. Oh, for goodness sakes, me too! What are you doing Saturday? Nothing. Do you want to go adventuring? How do you mean? I mean like jumping right out of your skin and being absolutely somebody else. Not just pretending, but being somebody else. Look, you know where the sailing pond is in Central Park? Yeah. You meet me there at 10 o'clock and I'll show you. What's your name? Marion Gilbert. What's yours? Valerie Boyd. Boyd? Are you the one that goes home early every day? I forgot. I've got to go see someone. Finally found a friend in that little snob hatchery. Oh, mercy, very well, coop. How long should I leave the curry on? I'd give it another five minutes. Mom? Oh, of course, dear. I've been hoping you would. I'd like to meet some of your little friends. Thanks. Better make it ten. Maybe she can go with you afterwards to Mrs. DePaul's. Oh. Oh, Mom, I told you I'm not going to that thing. Who's Mrs. DePaul? She's a cruddy old woman who runs a cruddy old dancing class. On the contrary, she happens to be a very nice woman who offers these ungrateful brats a chance to meet some very nice boys every Saturday afternoon. In case you're interested, I saw some of those very nice boys that go to Mrs. DePaul's waiting for the bus the other day. Trinity School boys. You know what they were doing, those very nice boys? What? Burping. Pardon? They were having a burping contest to see who could burp the loudest. Well, you can't beat the upper classes for gracious living. Did you see these Italian shoes in the Altman ad this morning? Mm -hmm. I couldn't wear anything like that. Mm -hmm. Why not? I guess they're too pointed. Mm -hmm. It's a good heel, though. What about that? They are rather like that. <laughs>
Chinese. This could mean death. Especially the two beautiful white nurses. Look. You think we can make it? It's our only hope. We must never be taken alive. Here's the poison. Hold it in the back of your mouth. And when they try to radish us, just bite down on it. And they try and what? Radish us. Why would they want to do that? Because we're two beautiful white nurses, silly. Come on. My last thoughts were of him. Who? Gregory Peck. Too old. Wait here, I'll scout. One thing I can say from my apartment. You don't have to sit on granite there. I'd be scared to death, Henry. Yeah? Well, I can tell you this for certain. We're a lot more liable to run into your husband in the middle of Central Park than we are in my living room. No, somebody might see us going in. I've never been out with another man before, so you'll have to give me a little more time. And you mean that we're never going to be able to get together except on the top of rocks in Central Park? Darling, we don't want anything to happen that would spoil our friendship, do we? Oh. It's so beautiful the way it is, don't, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Then why don't we just keep it that way? Little punks. Marion, 
I can't tell you how pleased we are that Valerie has a real friend now. Well, I'm very pleased to be your friend. She spends much too much time alone, or with adults, which is even worse. We'll talk later. I can't compete with her music. Thank you. Was it a mess? I don't even remember it. I was a baby. My father lives in Florida, but I see him every now and then when he comes to New York. You don't seem very bothered about it. I don't think about it very much. I'm so used to living with Mom and Boothie. Who's Boothie? Well, she's an old friend who lives with us. She's swell. Is Emma your mother? Oh, no. She and her husband Charles take care of me. She's sweet, don't you think? Very. The school found them. Are yours divorced? No, but they travel all the time in Europe and places like that. Dad's business is international trade or something. Where's your home? I mean, your real home. I'm not sure exactly. We've got a place in Arizona, but I've never really seen it. It's for winter, and I go to school in the winter. And they've got an apartment in Paris, I think. Used to, anyway. They stayed a hotel here. You miss him very much? I used to, but I guess I'm like you now. The only time I really miss my dad is about 6 o'clock in the evening, when it's just getting dark. And we're going to sit down to have dinner, just the three of us. Mom and Boothie and me. Hey, you know Lillian Caffritz? That's Tony hair girl? Oh, she's really terrible. I can't stand her. Why didn't you put all that guck in her hair? Isn't it awful? Well, I was having dinner at her house one night at about 6 o'clock. Her father came home from the office. He bought Mrs. Caffritz about a bushel of roasted chestnuts and a couple of crummy little bunches of violets for Lillian and me. How corny can you get? Do you think your dad will ever come back? Why can't he? He's married again and got a couple of kids. But how do you know he's happy? Well, he's crazy about her. I know, but just suppose he suddenly realized his second marriage was a tragic mistake. His eyes are opened at last, and he knows now that your mother is the only woman he's ever loved in his whole life. I don't think there's much chance of that. So there's nothing to do but to tell her the truth. The second wife, I mean. He's simply got to go back to the only woman he's ever loved in his whole life. Goombay's second wife. You think that's really possible? Well, he's got no other choice. He can't live a lie, can he? He's got to go back to his one true love. Maybe during Christmas. Christmas Eve, maybe. About six o'clock. You and your mother are all alone trimming the tree when suddenly the doorbell rings. I'd be the one to answer it. But you'd be wondering who on earth it could be because you weren't expecting anyone. And he'd open the door and he'd be standing there, simply loaded with presents. Before you could say anything, he'd say, shh, because he wants to surprise your mother. At first, give you a big hug as tight as he could. And then Mom would come down to see who it was, because she'd been wondering why she didn't hear anybody say anything. And for a long time, they'd just stand there and stare at each other, not saying anything. They wouldn't have to. And then he'd take her in his arms and rain kisses on her upturned face. And they'd just love each other to death right there in the front door. Do you really think... I'd like some clam chowder. Clam chowder? Oh, oh wash your hands first. And then two small bladders came out of their mouths. If you'd been at rehearsal... Just as she was beginning to hum, too. Henry, you've got to remember you're not Van Cliburn. Now, if Van Cliburn misses a rehearsal, okay, he's still Van Cliburn, and nobody says throw the bum out. Not, not too much of the back. I tried to phone him anyway. But I feel I would be remiss in my obligation to you as your manager if I didn't inform you that, frankly, they're not prepared to take this understanding attitude toward a... Well, let us say a non-Van Cliburn. 
What is it, Sidney? Now look, Henry. It's unnatural, isn't it? You're in a it's little slump, that's all. Now look at me. Can you see any difference? Now be honest with me. Can you see any difference? On my mother's grave, Henry, you don't look a day older than when we played stickball in Brooklyn together. I will give somebody a thousand dinas who can find one gray hair in my head, that's all. Henry, don't you understand what I'm telling you? You're in trouble. If I keep on telling them you're at the dentist, they're going to want to count your teeth. Very funny. You seem to be pretty charming with Boyd these days. Any reason why I shouldn't be? Not if you don't mind going around with somebody that's crazy. You're the one that's crazy. You know why she gets let out of school early every day, don't you? What makes you think I don't? You'd never guess in a thousand years. All right, how much? It's worth at least a quarter. I'll give you 15 cents. It's all I've got. Give me the dime tomorrow, can you? Well, if it's really interesting. All right. The reason she gets out every day, she goes to a psychiatrist. You mean a doctor? Doctor for the head, for the mind. Who told you that? Well, you might have told me it's absolutely true. The school knows it, of course, but nobody else is supposed to. Are you making this up? No, it's the absolute truth. Miss Cooney said that Boyd had come to her and asked her to keep it a secret. Miss Rollingman said she was right. The other rates might think she's crazy or something. But if I was that, she said anybody that wanted to could call me crazy. And then she said... Oh, please, yes, sir. Miss Rollingman said, in view of Boyd's marvelous IQ, she's a prize to the school anyway, even if she's a little difficult. What's IQ? Intelligent quota. If you're smart, you have a high one. If you're not, it's low. The way they talk, Boyd's some kind of a genius. Gosh sakes. And, uh, very, very rich besides. Want some more, darling? Yeah, I think I'd like some. I hate to go, but Emma's going to skin me anyway. What for? It's not late. I miss Dr. Greentree. Who's Dr. Greentree? Her doctor, who do you think? Well, naturally, darling, but I just wondered. It's all right. I don't mind your knowing. Dr. Greentree's my psychiatrist. Your what? Will you please? It's my psychiatrist. Well, now I've heard everything. If you don't mind, Boothie, it's not a thing to joke about. Well, he's not really joking, darling. It's just that Val's so young. I was well into my 30s before I hit the couch. Why did you go, Mrs. Booth? Oh, it's become part of the ritual of divorce, Val. I'm sorry. No need to be. It's the only fun I ever got out of that little scuffle. This is the first time I ever heard about it. May as well know I took a shot at it, too, for a while. Mom! We had to, dear. In those days, it would have been like not owning a TV set. Darling, when people need help, they go wherever they think they can find it. That's what Val did. Because she needed help. Isn't that right, Val? That's what everybody says, anyway. But you know how often your mother went twice? The third afternoon, there was a sale on at Bergdorf Goodman. <laughs> That's not true. It was Lord and Taylor. You know the only reason I quit? One day, I was telling this, this wizard one of the most delightful dreams, straight out of Henry Miller. I heard him snoring. <laughs> no, <laughs> really, Boothie. My trouble was I couldn't dream. That's my trouble. Dr. Greentree gets so mad if I don't dream. I dream all the time. Now, you stay out of this. You're normal. Have you ever tried eating a, a bowl of chili con carne before retiring? That gives you nightmares, doesn't it? Honey child, psychiatrists love nightmares. Hey, I tell you what, I'll give her some of my dreams. Say, that's a wonderful idea. You can tell him my dreams and then tell us what he said, and I'll get treated for nothing. And then he'll be one of us. <laughs> that's right, three kooks and a hitchhiker. I've got to run. I'll get my coat and walk you to the bus. It's been fun, Val. It's been just wonderful. Will you ask me again? What about next Friday? Dinner? Maybe we'll get tickets for something. I'd love it. Oh, at any other time you can come, dear. <laughs> Boothy. <laughs> From one coop to another. <laughs> you know what I think? 
what it was at first. Why I had to leave school every day. What? I thought maybe you had some kind of incurable disease you didn't want anybody to know about. Me know it's gonna die? Maybe they've given you only a year to live, even with daily injections. May I take your arm? Oh, and so young, too. They tried to keep it from me at first. They told me it was just a bad cold. Did you try Mayo Brothers? Yes, they were completely baffled. What about John Hopkins? He knew even less than they did. I knew a girl who was dying once, and she lingered and lingered and lingered and lingered till everybody nearly went crazy. I have too many red corpuscles. You mean white. Are you sure? That's why I read one. I have too many white corpuscles. May we stop for a moment? Have you some Kleenex? No, but... It's only a momentary faintness. Here, try this pill. You are so good to me. You are my friend. And I am determined that your last year on Earth will be the happiest of your whole life. When's the year up? October 18th. What's this flavor? Chocolate. You like it? It's fabulous. You know what I hate most about this awful tragedy? Dying? No. It's being such a burden on everyone. But what can I do? Doctors have been all that is humanly possible, and yet I suffer day and night. What's the matter with her? She's wrong. It's one of my attacks, dear. Hey, this kid needs help. No, really. What's the matter? What's the matter? Everything's gone black. Somebody get a cab. I'm gonna get a taxi. She's straining to death. Open her collar, quick! Don't open her collar. Open that kid's collar. She'll catch pneumonia. What do you want her to do? Choke to death? Open her collar. Look, it's no skin off my nose one way or the other, but the way that kid's sweating, you open her collar, you'll have a case of pneumonia on your hands. Oh, her collar, I'll close her collar. Just somebody make up their mind. Physician, can I help? Oh, yes, doctor. There's a girl over here, very sick. I'm feeling a little better now. Now, take it easy, kid. Take it easy. Everything's well, under control. I'll do what I can. I'm, I'm a physician. Doctor, she's dying. I'm feeling a little better. I know. We'll just take a little look anyway. Hold her still. Yeah. You better stand back. Yeah. You don't mind having a little checkup for nothing, do you? But she's all right, doctor. Honestly, it was all a joke. What did she say? Joke, huh? You know what doctors do with people who make jokes like that? We take them straight to the hospital and pump their stomachs out. Did you ever have your stomach pumped out by a real good pumper? I once pumped out a joker until he couldn't get out of bed for a week. Please, Doctor, we didn't need anything. Oh, so if I don't find anything no. the matter with hey, you... Hey, I got a cop! There's a cop car on the way! Hey. Office, my darling. You just talked to him on the telephone. He couldn't possibly be around here. I know, but... Look out! Oh. coming here to see you, Val. Not me, I'm afraid. I'll bet you. I'm no musician, not a real one. Just playing the piano isn't enough. You have to have something special to be a musician, and I haven't got it. Just 10 more feet, 12 at the outside, and I'd have been home. Maestro? They don't like it, you know, when you don't show for two rehearsals in succession. So you don't see anything peculiar in the fact that they were the same little punks, eh? They live in the neighborhood and they play in the park. So what's so peculiar about that? But twice with the same dame. Well, how could it not be the same dame if the same dame's the only dame you ever go out with anymore? I tell you, Sidney, you've never seen anything like her. Nervous as a whippet. They're ready, Mr. Orient. All right, all right, all right. I think that next time I'll drop a couple of Milltowns in a drink next time. Hmm? Say, hey, hey, what's this avant-garde stuff it says here? Sure, way out. It said it in the Times. No tune? Are you kidding? I hope I don't throw up. Valerie Boyd, you shaved your legs. You are the biggest blabbermouth. You didn't tell me. 
I don't have to tell you everything. What do you think? She shaved her legs. Louder. Some of the people in the balcony can't hear you. You're going to have bristles. Not if I keep shaving them. Please, girl. But why'd you do it? You're not so hairy. I'm old enough if I want to. I mean, it's not as if you were as hairy as Caffrey's. Talbot's hairier than Caffrey's arms and legs. But it doesn't show so much on her. She's a blonde. A brunette always looks hairier than a blonde. Caffrey's is the hairiest. That stuff Cole Porter writes.
Creep? What do you mean, creep? Isn't that him? Isn't it awful? But, but we we'll read all about him in a magazine. He's been married about a dozen times. You still got the magazine? Well, I don't know. I'll ask her. Not that it matters. I love him anyway. I adore him. You can tell the whole world if you want to that I, Valerie Campbell Boyd, love and adore the great and beautiful and wonderful Henry Orion. World without end. Amen. But look. No, you look. Isn't he absolutely divine? Hey, yeah, he really is cute, but I thought you said he needed practice. Oh, Gilbert, have you no soul? Of course he needs practice, especially on the scales, but this is love, Gilbert. Oh, my dreamy dream of dreams, my beautiful, adorable, oriental Henry. How can I prove to you that I'm yours? What am I going to do, Gil? You mean it's real? I don't know what else. I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't even think of anything else. That next day I went to the record shop when it opened, and I bought his only two records. That's all he's got out for, darling. I've been playing them ever since. You gonna tell him? Tell him? Oh, but you've got to, Val. He's got to know. I wouldn't dare. Why not? You're not a little child any longer, Val. We're both of us practically adolescents. And I'll bet you Mr. Orient would be proud to know you love him. You mean, just walk right up to him and tell him in person? You've got to. What are you doing? This is the most important thing in the whole world. But it's got to be a secret, hasn't it? It's got to be. So we'll make a blood pact never to betray our secret, all right? Yeah. And we'll have a secret language, his language. The mysterious language of the Orient. That's it, oh, mysterious cherry blossom. Do we really have to draw blood? Of course, that's what makes it important. A blood pact means it will help each other as long as we live, especially in love. I'll help you now, and you'll help me later when I find my true love. Wow. Now, jab yours, but be careful. It hurts. Okay, now together like this. While we take a solemn oath. I do solemnly swear that, um, what? That whereas love is the most important thing in the whole world, especially true love, hereby be it resolved that Marion Gilbert and Valerie Boyd do solemnly swear that we will live a secret life, forever and eternally dedicated to the one Henry Orient, the truly beloved of Miss Boyd. On pain of human sacrifice, I do. And from this minute on, we will devote our whole lives, both day and night, except during homework, to the study of the aforesaid Henry Orient, his life both public and private, where he lives and what he thinks about, who he sees, and what life means to him when he's not practicing his art. Exactly where is your husband at this very moment? In New Rochelle, I suppose. Hmm? Playing golf. And uh, New Rochelle is on this side of Stanford, is that not right? Yes. Now then, on finishing a game of golf in New Rochelle, has your husband ever been known to return to Stanford by way of East 64th Street, New York? <laughs> no, but... Uh... <laughs> right, right. So you grant, then, that it would be a most peculiar thing for a man to do, to go home to Stanford, Connecticut, from New Rochelle, New York, by way of East 64th Street, New York City. <laughs> eh? Yes, but look, Ned. <laughs> now, no, no. to... now comes a very important question. Does Paul know anything I was going to tell him that I had met you. No. 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 My darling, 
that has never yet been known to lead to anything else but misunderstandings. Never mention my name to him. Right? You want me to set your poem to music, don't you? Oh, so much! <laughs> and why shouldn't you? It is unquestionably the finest poem for music since... Well, since only God can make a tree. <laughs> Cannot fail to become a classic. But my darling, a composer has to compose. Even only God can make a tree. I mean, the fellow didn't compose it in a tree. <laughs> eh? oh, no. he, went, uh, he went right home and he sat down at the piano to compose it. You understand what I mean? I know, but... All right, then. I mean, what are we going to do? Are we going to pass up a chance at a song that could live forever? Or um, shall we nip up to my place and take a hack at it on the piano? I shouldn't. I shouldn't, well, you know. I, well, no, not yet. Check. Yes. Darling, listen. Who on earth is going to take the least possible interest in two very respectable looking people going about their own business on a dull Sunday <laughs> afternoon in New York? Put this down. Honorable Henry, eat much chow chow. Get some mysterious cherry blossom. <laughs> also, also, very generous. That's lovely way to keep yen yen. Yen yen? Change. <laughs> They're getting up. What's the matter, darling? Don't you think I'd better wait in here while you get us a taxi? All right. Don't go away. <laughs> hey, taxi! Hold it right there, will you, chum? Won't be a second. Ran out the back door. She just ran. Yeah, ran out the back door. Yeah. Stanford, Connecticut, uh, 164 East 64th Street. Absolutely fantabulous. And here's the first letter you ever wrote me. Oh, heavenly Valerie. Oh, moon of my delight. You think he call you the same thing you call him? Well, why not if he's supposed to love me the same way? How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. Say, that is neat, though. You could really be a writer. Well, it's not really all mine. I got the general idea from Elizabeth Barrett Browning. 
But isn't it wonderful? Are you going to answer it? Tonight. Is that the magazine? Mm, yeah. And I have all my notes from the restaurant. And the cigarette the waiter gave us. No filter. He's not scared. Does it tell where he lives? On East 64th. A typical day for Mr. Orient begins at noon when he's awakened by his faithful valet with a cup of lotus blossom tea. Hey, look! Five, four, three, two, one. And now he's just opening his eyes. Isn't that fantastic? And now he's just beginning to sit up. Mm, good morning, Jeeves. Good morning, sir. I do hope you slept well. Oh, very well indeed. Thank you, Jeeves. Mm, that lotus blossom tea smells absolutely ravenous. Thank you, sir. I make it from the very highest grade lotus blossoms, fresh day. Mm. It's exceptionally scrumptious this morning. Jolly good, really. <laughs> You're crazy. He's not English. <laughs> then what? Um. His breakfast is always the same: a seasonal fruit, Melba toast, a coddled egg. What's that? Oh, that's coming later. Go on. And black coffee. Promptly at one o'clock, he begins his daily constitutional, which consists of a brisk walk up Fifth Avenue. We'll take the Fifth Avenue bus. If we're in town, we can follow him the whole day. Don't forget the magazine, so if we lose him, we can read it. Oh, oh, wait a second, wait a second. Hey, see, these are cool. You should get them. Oriental Bazaar, are they neat? Go, go. Chicken chow, mate. Let's go. Talk to him? No, when he said hello, I hung up. He's got a very masculine voice, don't you think? Like Gregory Peck's. Hey, now look. If he doesn't come down soon, we'll buzz him again. Okay. I'll call him next time. Okay. kids hanging around here for? We're waiting for our mother. The note said they were going to let her out here. Let her out of what? Out of the car. They're bringing her back this afternoon, the note said. And this is where they're going to let her out. 64th and Lexington. What are you talking about? The men that took her off are bringing her back this afternoon. And we're waiting for her. Are you trying to kid me or something? No. That's exactly what the note said. Show him the note, sister. Well, I haven't got it. I left it with Mademoiselle. Well, you mean that your mother was like a, a kidnap? No, they didn't grab her or anything like that. They just left a message backstage that a friend wanted to meet her after the show at, at a place in the Bronx. And when she got there, it was a fake and they tied her up. You could always get a ransom for a star, you know. What's your mother's name? Jane Mansfield. That's your mother, Jane Mansfield? And they're gonna let her out here? That's what the note said. Well, how about Mr. Mansfield, your father? Now, where's he at? Dead. Sorry. It's all right. We're used to it now. Say, how about getting a few cops here and grabbing these monkeys? Oh, no, we couldn't do that. That was one of the conditions, not to tell the police on pain of physical torture. Yeah, but I didn't make no promise like that. No, 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 you mustn't. Really? You mustn't. They might find out and do something terrible to her, don't you see? Now, look, the cops, they know how to handle a deal like this. Believe me, you mustn't promise, will you? Please. What's going on here? Will you get up? Will you get up? Get up! What's a... Promise you won't do anything. Okay, but that's a fine thing for people to see, like you're praying to a fellow. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to keep my eyes open, just in case. Now, the minute that you spot the car, you scratch your head. You understand? Which one? 
need a woman. Just scratch your head like it is, it's that sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> you know, you're gonna get us in jail again. Hey, get me the police department. Well, uh, what time does this train leave? It's just left. Then what are you waiting for, my darling? I mean, just take a taxi and, uh, uh step on it. <laughs> my darling. I'm tired of cherry blossoms. <laughs> Avanti. Shut the door. You know what this is? No. Why don't you take off your hat and sit over there against the last rays of the sunset? That was out of my memories of you. And now... you. The curl of your hair. The soft curve of your cheek. The burnt umber in your sultry eyes. The bare bronze of your shoulders. The sweet warmth of your throat. Those satin arms. Twin paws. daily constitutional, Henry Orient plunged into his work with the dedication of a truly great artist. Friends say it is not unusual for him to spend hours on end perfecting his technique. Gee. Please, uh, uh, I'm frightened. Uh, play for me again, will you? I have a copy of my poem here. You have no idea how long. I have dreamed of this moment ever since I first heard your voice on the telephone. Please, Henry, I'm frightened. Darling, there's no need to be frightened. Nothing to be frightened about. Oh. Hey, stop! <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I, th I thought you were going to jump out of the... See those kids? 
cute. Those kids are everywhere we go. That day in the park, at my concert, in front of the spaghetti joint last oh! Sunday. Oh! Where? Close the curtains, please. Yeah. Did he see you? Who? Your husband. Is he out there, too? Didn't you see him? No. No. What am I going to do? Listen. Listen. Did you or did you not see your husband out there? No, I, I, di I didn't see him, didn't you? What the hell is the idea of yelling his name at me like that? I meant those children. Didn't you say they were following us? Listen, I never said... I mean in the park and last Sunday and out there now watching. Uh, you must be out of your mind. Well, that's what you said, isn't it? Always when we're together. I thought you told me your husband didn't suspect anything. I didn't think he did. But how can you tell what your husband is thinking? He's peeking, see? I'm sure of it now. It's exactly the sort of thing Paul would think of. Little girl detectives that, that nobody would suspect. That's the nastiest thing I ever heard of, employing innocent little children to get the goods on and your the own wife. And the unfair thing about it is I haven't done anything. Not one single blessed thing. Unless you want to call it listening to music I mean, or something. Imagine, imagine being busted in on by a, a couple little punks like that. Once a man gets it into his head that his wife's been in another man's apartment, I mean, even in broad daylight, wild horses wouldn't interest him in the truth. Punks. No matter what punks, I say to him, no matter what I say, he'll put the most sort of construction possible on him. He'll go absolutely stark raving mad. He'll, I know it. Yeah? How big is he? I gotta get out of here, Mr. Orion. Is there a back entrance? There is, but you're not gonna use it, Mrs. Dunworthy. You're going out of the front door so they can see you leaving. Are you crazy? I'm not crazy. You want them to report that you stayed up here all night and haven't come up here with a gun after me or something? No, no. You're gonna, you're gonna go straight out of the front door as if you own the whole building. So if they do happen to turn in a report, you can draw their attention to the fact that you were hardly up here long enough to get... This must not be a typical day. Should we try again next Saturday? What about? You got nothing whatever to worry about. Just don't even look in that direction, you understand? I got the first taxi you see, tell him to step out at the Grand Central Station. You got a train to catch now. You got nothing whatever to worry about. You think it's gonna be perfectly oh, uh, all right. Uh, will you come again sometime? Thank you so much, Mr. Orion. And bring Mr. Dunhill with you next time. Dunworthy. Either one you wish. What? Bonsoir and good afternoon. <laughs> Oh, 
leg. Please, you don't want to break my neck, do you? Why didn't you let me know? But you knew we were coming back for the holidays. I forgot. Oh, please, dear, how could you forget? My goodness me, but you've grown. I never would have known you. Dirty face. What are you doing with these strange, peculiar hats on? Um, this is Marion Gilbert, my mother. Oh, how do you do, Marion? Why, thank you. What are you doing, playing Chinese? Where's Dad? He had to go straight to the office, but he's going to come back for dinner with us. How would you like the Four Seasons? Why? Um, can Gilbert go with us? Thanks, but I can't make it tonight. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, dear. Well, perhaps you'll make it another night with us. How long will it take you to finish packing? Right now, you mean? Oh, that's okay. I've got to be going anyway. I'll be ready in five minutes. I'll be upstairs with Mrs. Handler. And don't waste time, darling, because I've got some people coming in for drinks at five o'clock. Goodbye, Marion, dear. I know we'll be seeing you soon. I hope so. Boy, am I going to get some good eats now. Four Seasons, 21. That's the only kind of place they go to, you know. And some place where everything's on fire and they bring it to the table. I may get the gout. You're not coming back here, even at night? No, they usually take a room for me, too. And you ought to see the clothes. Bergdorf, Saks, Hattie Carnegie. That's the one break you get, you know, and they really don't want you around. Plenty of loot and they do show up. How long do you think they'll be here? Until after New Year's, usually, if they don't get fed up with me first. See ya. Wait, we'll drive you home. Gilbert? 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 Mrs. Lewis, what did I do about her laundry? Well, if you don't mind, send it over to the hotel. We're at the Melton. Oh, yes. Oh, darling. Didn't I ask you to hurry? I'm sorry. What is it? Nothing. Couldn't you have phoned and said I was sick or something? Stop being childish. The fact that Val wants to be with her mother and father while they're in town has nothing whatever to do with your friendship. She could have at least phoned, couldn't she? Behave yourself. <laughs> be traditional with me and have an eggnog? Or is it going to be martinis for you, too? No, I'll be trad, Dad. Where's the bowl? I'll get one for each of you. <laughs> Thank you. Say, aren't you wearing stockings? Sure, ever since I got here. Come on out on the terrace. I've got something to tell you. But how do you keep them up? Mrs. Gilbert is the mother of one of Valerie's little school friends. Just a smidgen high on that hideous little age. Come on, so bad, Miss Manhattan. What do you wear? Some kind of corset? Garter. See that fellow playing the piano? Let me see. Doesn't it cut? Of course. His name is Joe Daniels, and I had a date with him. But for gosh sakes, he's as old as the hill. Over 30 easily, and he's married. Where was his wife? They're busted up, but still married. Did you neck? Hey, here, girls. Just don't gulp it down, huh? Thanks. Oh, one other thing. Don't do any more driving tonight. He's cute. He's sweeter than he used to be. Did you neck? It was a trap, crazy. I asked him to lunch there. You mean, you may think to eat? Look, you've got to promise not to say a word about this to anybody ever, okay? 
course not. Don't you remember we've got our blood packed? On the bones of your ancestors. I do. Okay. I made the date because I wanted to talk to him about how much he'd been seeing Mom when Dad wasn't here. You think they were passing at each other? I don't know, but I didn't want Dad to get hurt. Hiya. Who are you? Valerie. Valerie who? Valerie Boyd. Oh, I see. Isabel's kid. Who's that with you? Marion Gilbert, a friend of mine from Norton's. Uh, well, you mustn't expect me to talk with you. I don't know what the hell to talk about with school children. Oh, will you excuse us, please? Oh, you can bet your sweet little... Have you told Dr. Greentree about it? You think I'm crazy? You artists. That's supposed to be a secret. Uh, I should certainly hope so. All we were doing was pretending, if that's what you mean. How did you meet Mr. Orient? We've never met him. Oh, stop it. Well, honestly, Mrs. Boyd, we haven't. But I wasn't speaking to you, Marion. I wouldn't go to any of your things. Please excuse me. You tell me, kid, if she's too tough on you. I think you should be going too, Marion. Well, I'd like to stay if you don't mind. Yes, I do mind. But it was just make believe. Good night, Marion. Why don't you call her, darling, and see if she can come? I tried, but the operator says they don't take any phone calls before noon. Well, what about the gifts? They gave them to her last night so they could sleep late this morning. That's the sort of thoughtfulness that never would have occurred to Mr. Dickens. We'll set a place for her anyway, just in case. You'll never let her out today. Hello? Uh, this is Isabel Boyd. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Boyd. Oh, can I come to Belmont? Can I? Good morning. May I speak to Valerie, please? Oh, Valerie's not here. Are you sure? Well, just a minute. Mrs. Boyd's looking for Valerie. Have you any idea where she might be? I bet she's run away. Uh, no, we haven't heard from her this morning. You know, Mrs. Gilbert, if Valerie is there, it would be a mistaken kindness to try to cover up for her. I've told you. She's not here, Mrs. Boyd. I bet she comes here. I hope so. But you'll have to call her mother at once, you know. Oh, sure. I mean it, the minute she gets here. I understand. What a dreadful woman. I'm sure she's there, and that woman is lying about it. I'm afraid I don't think you handle the situation very well, Is. You didn't see the book. No, but <laughs> don't all young girls begin to dream about romance at that age? If she can find it to dreaming. That's ridiculous. You mean trapping Joe Daniels into a date is only dreaming? I think the less said about Joe Daniels, the better. Well, what's that supposed to mean? If we don't hear anything by noon, I'm going to call the police. This is really something new. Such concern for a child you don't even think is yours. No, that's not what I said, Is. I said once I wished I could be sure. That doesn't matter anymore. That's just an unimportant technicality. I'm going to get dressed. Hello? Joe? 
morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have you seen or heard from Valerie? Are you kidding? She's gone. She's completely disappeared. Well, she's hardly likely to come knocking at my door, honey bun. Well, she did before, didn't she? Look, kids, I'm sorry I ever told you that story. I was just trying to be funny. Well, I'll bet. If you just use your mind a little, you'd realize the fact that Val loathes me, while she even called me a lousy pianist. You should have seen the look she gave me. Uh, I'll have to call you back, because Frank just came in. No cloud above, no earth below, a universe of a sky and the snow. Hail and Merry Christmas, whoever you may be. Mr. Orient. I am, and God bless you for making the point so charmingly. And who may I ask are you? This is Mrs. Franklin Boyd. Well, Mrs. Franklin Boyd, you are the possessor of one of the most angelic voices it has yet been my pleasure to listen to. Speak on for me, will you? I am Valerie's mother. I know she's there. May I speak to her, please? Eh. Uh, Mr. Orient, I told you I wanted to speak with my daughter. If you don't put her on the phone immediately, I shall call the police. Before you do something you will later regret, may I first tell you that your daughter does not happen to be here. Do you happen to know how old my daughter is, Mr. Orient? Fourteen. Mrs. Boyd. Yes, I think that's all the police will need to know, Mr. Orient. <laughs> Mrs. Boyd. Mr. Orient? Mr. Orient! Hello, Mrs. Boyd. Mr. Boyd. Tell me something. Does your daughter ever dress like a Chinaman? Mrs. Boyd. Mr. Orion. <laughs> Won't you join me? Uh, 
perhaps care for a drink? Uh, no, thanks. No, uh, some coffee, eh? Uh, thank you, no. No, niente grazie, no. Still no word. No, no? But uh, I would not worry if I were you. They all come back, I'm told, soon as the money runs out. <laughs> I've heard of you, of course, but I, I haven't had the pleasure of hearing you play. Well, since I'm not Liberace, I would be surprised if you had. <laughs> You know, um, you puzzle me, Mrs. Boy. Oh? In what way? Remember I mentioned your voice on the telephone? Yes. And you told me you didn't sing. No, I don't. I see. Have you ever been on the stage? No. Oh. Well. Strange, because I... I have a very good ear for voices. Nine times out of ten tells me, well, almost everything. After hearing yours, for example, even over the telephone, I could have entered a room that was full of women, and I could have walked directly up to you. That is remarkable. But I would have been wrong. Oh, why? Because I would have walked up to a dark woman dark and sultry, like one of, like one of sergeants at Warden Beauties. And that is what puzzles me. Oh, would you mind if we uh, talked about my daughter first? You see, you are not by sergeant. Oh, no, no, no. You are by Renoir. Oh, yes. Definitement Renoir. Have you ever seen his girl in April in the Frick? I'm sorry, I'm Beautiful. It's all rose and gold. Golden hair, golden sunshine. A golden girl smiling in a rose garden. You're a nymph with a sultry voice. You know, if you're not in a hurry, I'd love to have a cup of coffee. Okay. Mm. Garçon, do a cafe, per favore. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Night, David. Night, thank you again. Oh, and don't forget the school benefit meeting a week from Tuesday. All right. Night. Night. Why don't you call again and see if they've heard anything? Okay. I can't imagine where she'd be if she didn't come here. She's probably riding around the subway, poor kid. Melton Hotel, may I speak to Mrs. Boyd in 3729? Some Christmas for her, I'll say. Hello? Mrs. Boyd, this is Marion Gilbert. Have you heard anything? No, that's what I was calling you about. No, but I've called the police and the Missing Persons Bureau. They may be able to find her. Oh, I'm sure she's all right. You might also be interested in the fact that I had a word with your Mr. Orient. You call Mr. Orient? I don't think we'll have to worry about him anymore. What did you say to him? I'm sorry, I can't discuss it now. I'm awaiting a call from Mrs. Hamler. Good night, dear. I don't care if she is her mother. It was a crummy thing to do. Poor Val. She really loves him very much, you know. I know. I went through exactly the same thing with John Barrymore. Who? What did you say? I said, who's he? This guy you went through it with. You mean you don't know who John Barrymore was? No. You've never even heard his name? No. Excuse me. It's later than I think. Oh, isn't there anything we can do for her, Mom? They don't love her. They don't even want her. Nobody loves her but us. They just stick her in schools and with doctors and anything to get rid of her. 
It'll ruin her, Mom. It'll kill her if she's got to go on like this. I know, darling. Couldn't we ask Mr. Boyd? Of course not. But if they don't want her... You don't know that, darling. Not really. And families have different relationships. And it wouldn't matter anyway, because no matter what they do or how they feel about her, they're still her parents. And for better or worse, children belong to their parents. Who fixed that? Well, now, don't look at me. But this much we can do. We'll give her our love as much as we possibly can and try and make her feel that our home is also hers. If we can do more, then we will. Thanks, Mom, and oh, for the stockings and the money and everything. Except for Val, it's been a wonderful Christmas. Good night, darling. And don't worry too much about Val. One thing about unwanted children, they soon learn how to take care of themselves. Good night, Mom. It's me. Did you bring anything? I'm starving. Holy cow! If you let me tell Mom, you could have some cranberry sauce, too. No. No matter how nice they are, they all belong to the same club or union or something. And the minute it's about a daughter, boom, straight to the telephone. You heard anything else? They've got the police after you. For what? Just looking. Missing Persons Bureau. How do you like that? Maybe they'll drag the river. And maybe we could watch them. And if they find someone else's body... Oh... I talked to your mother, too. And that she's burning. She said she talked to Henry. You really think she did? That's what she said. What did she say? She wouldn't tell me, but it sounded like she rolled him out. Oh, no. I didn't think you cared anymore. I didn't think so, either, but I still think about him a lot. <laughs> what he must have thought. Probably that she was crazy. Can you imagine him trying to figure out what on earth she was talking about? Somebody take her away before she starts climbing up the wall. Hmm. I guess that's the end. Goodbye, Henry, darling. Oh, it can't be. We mustn't let it be. It's too late. She spoiled it. Hey, wait a minute. Where's the Bible? Right here. What are you doing? I've got a super idea. What's that? I got it over on 3rd Avenue for 75 cents. What is it? The eternal flame of the Garden of the Gods. Turn off the light. thousand mandarins hark to your humble servant come on count out to it oh moon of my secret heart speak to your worshipful cherry blossom golden bells i'm cherry blossoms now speak to your worshipful golden bells oh moon of the glorious africa give us the wisdom of a mysterious orient oh mighty king of the calm a magical sign from the tomb of our honorable ancestors Golly, Moses. The honorable gods have spoken. Mr. Boyd? Yes. Is she still here? Yes, sir. Well, that's all then. Thanks. Good night. Night, sir. Who is it? Mrs. Gilbert? Yes? 
It's Frank Boyd, Valerie's father. Oh. I apologize for this, but could I come in for a few minutes? Why, yes, of course. Thank you. I promise not to keep you too long. Oh, it's not late, really. We just finished cleaning up. Can I fix you a drink? Thank you, if you'll join me. Scotch or bourbon? Scotch and plain water will be just fine. Thank you. It's about Valerie, of course. Is she back? Oh, that's all right. I know she's here. Oh, no, I wouldn't do a thing like that. Why, I would have called Mrs. Boyd at once. You really don't know, do you? Well, I, I know she's not here, if that's what you mean. She came in through the basement. What? A man from the Missing Persons Bureau was watching from across the street. There's no way out back, is there? No. Well, then she's still here. She's probably hiding in Marion's room. That little... No, no, please. Not yet. I'd like to just sit for a few minutes, if you're sure you're not too tired. Yes, of course. I can see why Val considers this a real home. The only one, in fact, she's ever known. I can't think of a more shameful thing for a father to have to admit. People can't always control their circumstances. No, not always. Val knows you have to travel a lot, and she's really very understanding. Much more so than you realize. That's what I'm afraid of. In any case, let's not worry about that. The little lost lambs are home again. And that's all that matters. You're right, and I apologize. To the return of the prodigals. I'll drink to that. back at the stage door. Come on! What's the matter? I'm scared. That's all right. I'll talk to him first. What will you say? Um, how about explaining we'd like an appointment to apologize for your mother? <laughs> That's wild! Why don't you stick to chopsticks, you bum? You better take some lessons! Who told you you could play? Where do we get our money back? You're not dead! Just Get out of here! You're a nothing! Why don't you go back to Brooklyn? I told you if you didn't practice. Come on, we'll try PJs. Are you sure he comes here every night? After every concert, that's what said in the magazine to unwind. We here. scared anymore? Not a bit. He's probably crushed. Maybe I can comfort him. Hey, I've got an idea. Come on. He's not back yet. In a way, you know, I'm glad it happened. Even if it was his own fault. Because now maybe he'll appreciate my understanding and sympathy. That's when a man really needs a woman when he's in a jam. Even if we never see each other again, this will be the night of nights, and we'll never forget each other as long as we live. They'll kill us if they ever find out about this. Then we must keep it among the great mysteries of the Orient. It's on! How did you get in? I'll tell you what I'll bet. I'll bet he came straight home from the concert and took a nap or something. To unwind, I guess. Hey, look! Looking all the way, 
is going, don't you understand? Then he'll be all alone. Yes, but shh. I have drunk deep of joy tonight, my love. Now there can be no other wine in life left for me. Tomorrow? What time? Five-ish. Five-ish. Tonight, Makushla. Val, I'll never tell anybody. Honest. There's considerable worry tonight, you know. I'm sorry. What was it, Mr. Orient again? No. That's all over. Well, I should certainly hope so. Where were you? Just goofing around looking at Christmas windows. Till 2 a.m. you were looking in windows? Along Broadway and Fifth Avenue. You don't really expect me to believe that. I'm sorry. And is that all you have to say? I don't think we ought to go on with this tonight. It's very late, and we're all too tired and edgy to discuss it sensibly. You hungry? Would you buy a glass of milk or a sandwich? No, thank you. Well, then you go on upstairs, and we'll talk about it in the morning. Just one thing. In case you and Miss Gilbert are planning any further adventures, I had a little talk with your Mr. Orient this afternoon. And if you ever go anywhere near him again, I've asked him to let me know. Instead of calling the police, as he had intended. Call the police for what? Well, he's got a right to protect himself from that sort of harassment. And he was really going to call the cops? Indeed he was. He sounds nuttier than the girls. All right, what would you do? Well, if I couldn't buy them off with sodas, I suppose I'd feel compelled to pack a rod. 
You know, you talk as if you saw nothing serious in her behaving like a little tart. Now, look. For one thing, I don't think that's a fair description of her behavior. Well, how would and you for another, if we go on like this, we're all of us liable to say things we'll wish we hadn't. So what do you say we just drop it? Just so two things are perfectly clear. One, Mr. Orient. That's finished, you understand? I said it was. And Marion Gilbert, that's over too. Well, you really think that's necessary? It's all right, I don't care. You don't? I don't want to ever see her again. Well, I'm delighted. I think it'll save us all a good deal of grief. Even her mother admits it's been a most unfortunate friendship. They've been in constant trouble ever since they started running around town together. Marion just happens to be the typical product of a broken home. Be lucky if she doesn't end up a complete delinquent. But That's not true. I'm afraid you're much too young to understand these things, dear. Marion Gilbert's just about the most delinquent girl I've ever met in my whole life. Is that why you never want to see her again? When did Mrs. Gilbert tell you this? Tonight. I dropped by the Gilberts to see if they'd heard anything. That's why I was so late. She's a nice enough middle-class sort of woman, but with absolutely no whatsoever. She can go to bed now, can't she? Yes, of course. Good night, dear. Good night, darling. Good night, sir. I suppose we ought to take her out of that school. Do you have to go straight back to Rome? I'm not sure that I shouldn't stay here, you know, for a week or two and get us settled somewhere else. Now, what did Orient really have to say about them? Oh, he was quite amused by it all. Had he ever met them, really? No, I was wrong about that. Well, what were they doing, just following him around? Apparently, that was all. Well, I'm tired. I'm going on up to bed. You know, I'll bet that's what they were doing tonight, as a matter of fact. What do you mean? Following him around someplace. But she said not, didn't she? No, not really. I'll see you in the morning. Hello? Mrs. Boyd, this is Mrs. Gilbert. Oh, yes, Mrs. Gilbert. I apologize for calling so late, but I simply had to make sure. Did Val get there all right? Yes, just a few minutes ago. And what about Marion? Oh, didn't Mr. Boyd tell you? He was here. She got back before he left. <laughs> Would have been very funny, in fact, if we hadn't been so worried. She was trying to sneak in just as he started out. I don't know which was the more startled. Uh, yes. Um, well, thank you very much. Stupid of me. I, I stopped at the stork club for a nightcap with some friends. We'll talk about that in the morning, too. sit with you for a few minutes? I'd like it. I suppose we both have a secret now, huh? Life is a little rough at times, darling, for everyone. We don't have to shoot ourselves, do we? No. Nobody has it easy all the way. I'm terribly sorry, Dad. 
Thank you, dear. Thank you very much. Sometimes people get married for the wrong reasons. And it just doesn't work out. It's nobody's fault. I don't know if I can, but... Is there anything I can do? Well, uh, a great deal, if you like. What is the name of that uh, song? Got it, I did. Getting to know you, Janet. Getting to know all about you, Rogers and Hamster. That's the one. Well, you about me and me about you. Now, I know it's a little late, but do you think we could think about it? I'd like to very much. In a home, you think? You really think we could? Well, I've never really had one of my own, you know, not since I was very young. You mean just you and me? Well, that's the way it looks, doesn't it? Where do you think we could have it? Well, now, that is one of the things we have to think about. Now, there is Rome, Paris, London, wherever we like it best. I think it ought to be wherever you could be home the most. Well, that's right, but it really doesn't matter now. You see, I'm going to give up all this traveling. So wherever we decide on, that is where we'll be. Mr. and Miss Boyd at home. Gee, Dad. Okay? A-okay. A-okay. Well, that's it. And for a starter, is there any reason why you shouldn't fly to Rome with me tomorrow? You really mean that? Well, we have to look at all those places, don't we? To decide where we want to set up our home. And... Well, I wind up with a few loose business ends. Hmm? No. I don't know whether I ought to or not. But I feel awfully happy in a sort of sad way. I guess we both do. You're my only sweetheart. Ever and ever and ever. No, just till that fella comes along. Well, that's what I meant, but I'm not in such a hurry now. I'll bet. I'm afraid I have some rather stupid news. What do you mean? My husband knows about tonight. How? Oh. Uh, how, how, how could he? It seems the children were following us. You sure? Quite. Listen, uh, was he, uh, was he violent? Well, it, it wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> all right, now listen, uh, my love, listen. Uh, 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 first of all, don't worry. There was always this risk, and now, uh, now that it's out in the open, I, for one, welcome the challenge. But uh, we can't talk on the phone now, because it may be bugged. I, I want to see you first thing in the morning, see? But Henry... Listen, my darling, listen, listen, listen. Uh, just don't panic. Above all, don't panic. Just remember one thing. I am with you, and we're going to see this thing through together, come hell or high water. Yes, but... No more time to talk now, my darling. Buona notte, carissima. Goodbye, my sweet love. Good afternoon. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, uh, Pan Am? Listen, what's the next flight out of here? Anywhere. Yeah, that'll do. Well? What if she doesn't want to see me? I doubt that. You come with me? Well, of course. Come on.
You could write a letter occasionally. I didn't know what to say. I was too embarrassed. Val! Darling! Oh, come on in. Look who's here. I can't believe it. Mario! Oh, how wonderful. We thought we'd lost her. Not likely. We're here straight from the airport. Mario! Oh, nice to see Good you. She's probably up there doing her homework with the door shut. Why don't you go up and surprise her while we senior citizens have a drink, okay? Are you sure it's all right? Are you kidding? Go on. Hey, Marion. Yes? Marion. What is it? Hi. Hi. Your hair is different. Yeah, I did it myself. You like it? It's cool. Oh, you look wonderful. Come on up. I've got so much to tell you. Is that a Paris dress? Are you kidding? Bloomingdale. The whisper of little feet on the staircase. Scotch and blame water, isn't it? What a memory. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Now let's end all this suspense. Are you back here to stay? We've taken an apartment on 70th Street. And the Hamblers, Emma and Charles, are going to take care of us. That's wonderful. And I am absolutely petrified with fear. Of what? At my age, to take on a 14-year-old child and all her shenanigans. All those crazy jams they get themselves into. Maybe I ought to see a doctor. <laughs> you won't have to worry about that anymore. Why won't I? Because that's all over now. All those wild flights from reality into their own private and secret world. That's all over and done with. Well, that's a relief. We now face real trouble. There were some real cute boys here, American embassy families. But it was a real drag until somebody turned off the lights. What's that? Oh, midnight surrender. It's for the eyes. It glorifies them and brings out the highlights. Well, what happened then? Oh, brother. Heavy stuff? You should have heard them. And you really met? Sure, everybody did, haven't you yet? Honestly, the way they watch you around, you'd think we were criminals or something. Oh, but there's a boy at Mrs. DePaul's. He's simply fantastic. He's so gorgeous. How old? I don't know, but he's shaving already. Who is the boy you next with? Somebody said his name is George. What's this? Oh, that's some gook I picked up by mistake. It's trim of whiskers. You know what I like? What? A mouth like a crimson gash. Hey, that's a cool idea. 